Alright, welcome to Let's Play Europa Universalist 4. I'm Fly McGuffin, and this is the second part of my Zoroastrian, Zoroastrian Persia Mega Let's Play. Um, which is basically just me taking a country from uh, Crusader Kings 2 on through the other games in the Paradox uh, series. We're going to be playing as the Persian Empire. We started as the Satrap of Karen, who starts about over here, and made, uh, well, reclaimed the Persian Empire for Zoroastrianism, and actually managed to expand its influence beyond their borders. Now, for anyone familiar with the Crusader Kings 2 uh, ending, we had a significantly larger empire in that game, and I, for purposes of balance, I just wanted to cut things down to make things more interesting. And I think that's perfectly fine uh, to, you know, make things a bit more watchable. Now, uh, the basic purpose of, of the idea of, of CK2 was to expand Zoroastrianism as much as we could without going completely overboard. And we managed to expand uh, the religion up into Russia and into North Africa through Crusades, and Perm was actually because of a, just a kind of a fluke conversion through sending our, uh, our court chaplain up there. And, uh, yeah. So we've got a lot of weird situations going on uh, with religions. Ibadi has replaced Sunni as the main, uh, relig uh the main religious separation. Of, of Islam. Islam has largely been confined to uh, West Africa and the steppe hordes in India. Unfortunately, with so many religions competing, somebody had to lose, and again, for uh, the second time in my mega games, it was Islam. Now, Iconoclast has largely, largely replaced um, standard orthodoxy in Europe, but I replaced the Myophysite conversion, which ended up doing something wonky with just plain orthodox, which is what uh, Ethiopia usually starts as. Uh, but Abyssinia, in their place, is uh, uses basically the same thing. Now, uh, we have a... I modded a quite a few things, just for flavor reasons. As you can see, we have a specific king title. There's uh, these guys over here are Shahs. There's one satrap right here. These are just Persian titles. Um, the Mobad, Moabadan, Mobad. It's basically the Zoroastrian Pope. And this is just something that's like some kind of mega fire temple, which is what the churches in Zoroastrianism are called. I just got it something off Wikipedia. As you can see, the, a great proportion of the people in our, I, I suppose, sphere of influence are in the Ottoman tech group, but some of them are in the Muslim tech group. This is largely a, an effect of the conversion. As a matter of fact, in the conversion, because of our tech level, we actually ended up being in the Western tech group, which I did not want. So, uh, to make things a little bit better, we went from having all of the Middle East and the Ottoman Empire and, and Persia in the Western Tech group to just basically being Ottoman Timurids <laughs> without being a step horde. So I think it's a bit more balanced. So let's just actually get uh, started here. We go over a little bit more of the changes I've made. A lot of them uh, related to the religion may... I... <sighs> I suppose it seems a little bit like cheating, but I made the religion a little bit better because it's it's basically just a penalty that you start with. It makes it easier for people to convert your provinces. Um, so I basically gave it a little bit of a... This is basically what the Muslims have, um, so that's fine. And the local missionary strength right there, I left there to balance that out. So, uh, I'm going to assume that everyone watching this is familiar with EU4. If you're not, just please bear with me. I'll probably end up explaining things as I go anyway, because that's how I do it. But I'm not going to do a formal tutorial on the interface or anything like that. Uh, I think EU4 is 
expanded and improved a lot of things from EU3. So uh, I'll probably expound on what I I think of that. So, um, did I mention anything about Iceland? Iceland is Norse, and actually, I missed this guy completely in um, my conversion. This this group here is also Norse too. So, um, Iceland over there is Norse. I converted them as Reformed Norse because if you convert them as unreformed, it just makes them shamanist and it sucks. So I just uh, left it. I just made it like that so that things are a little bit more interesting. Let's see if they can pull off some kind of Cinderella story up there in the frozen north. Um, and Andalusia makes an appearance yet again. So, the situation we start in, we have three vassals. We have Syria, uh, Ascalon, which is actually a merchant republic, and Turkestan, who is a useless piece of crap up here. Um, <laughs> uh, so that's going to limit our, um, our diplomatic potential, because we only have four um, diplomacy dudes that we can use. So we can only do one more. Um, the situation we're in basically is we've got a few uncontested cores, mostly down here. Uh, these were things that were owned by um, dukes and stuff that I decided, you know, they can have them, but I'm going to have a core on them. And I think there's a few scattered around that I probably missed. But uh, I tried to remove all the cores because the converter gives you cores and everything if you do that. So, uh, really though, we're in good shape either way. So let's just go through um, this stuff. So we are Persian Empire, it's a specific type of uh, government. Basically, just uses the empire rules because that's what it converts you as. I just basically wanted it to be, have a Shah and Shah title. Our, our culture thing is Persian, because when, the, when I did the conversion, it basically made everything uh, monolithic Persian through the entire empire, which is, you know, Crusader Kings 2 tends to do that. So I, I made the Iranian culture group significantly larger by adding a bunch of cultures. So you can see there, Kurdish, Syrian, Egypto-Persian, Greco-Persian, Arabian Persian. It's a little bit uncreative in some of the names, but it, it gets the point across that Persian's not going to be the same everywhere, so uh, they're all in the same t culture group, though, so that's fine. Um, being the being the uh, Iranian uh, Union state, we don't have a problem having any of those underneath us anyway. Our king, Shah and Shah Vandad the Tenth, Vandad the Ninth, uh, when I was doing things off screen in Crusader Kings 2 uh, he tended to die within a couple of months of starting doing things so you know he's dead uh, we don't have any advisors we'll go over that in a minute um, what's, what else that I wanted to show oh our ideas so we start with Legacy of the Seoshayant or how do you pronounce that? Which is, uh, we did that decision in, in CK2 where you basically become the Messiah. Um, and it basically goes to Tolerance or True Faith plus one, um, which isn't that great. And recovers army morale sp speed plus five percent. I forget where I got that from, but it looked like a good bonus for that, so I did that. Um, I changed the name of a few of things, and I added uh, the Zawoda marriage tradition. <laughs> <laughs> Which I just put in there as kind of a kind of a, a callback to the way things worked in <laughs> Crusader Kings 2 where you marry your sister <laughs> as a Zoroastrian. Other than that, most of them are still pretty much the same things as the um, as the uh, normal Persian ideas with the exception of removing references to other religious groups and things like that. So... I think I did leave in the the reference to being stompified by the uh, 
Oh no, that's what I replaced uh, the, the, with the Zoda marriage. There's a there's a reference to being killed by the Timurids, but that didn't happen to us. Um, and our thing that we get at the end is minus 10% cavalry cost, which is the basic Persian idea. Uh, we start in the Ottoman tech group, which is 125% normal technology cost. I don't think we're going to end up westernizing because we that's that's definitely very competitive. Don't have any penalties to our monarch points or anything like that because we are, I guess, western enough. Like I know if you start in India, you get that, you get a minus one to all of your points. Um. So, that's basically that. So the the countries, for those who aren't familiar with this around us that we're going to be focusing on as far as alliances go are going to be the former members of our empire. Um, the farther away they are, the less likely we are to focus on them at all. And some of them are just jerks who, are, who messed with me a lot. Like Greece and Egypt are jerks and um, those guys can go die for all I care. Um, and especially Moldau. I hate Moldau. The Immortals are cool. They're they're up there now. I kicked them out of my empire. They're basically like the um, uh, like the Zoroastrian Teutonic Order. They're gonna hang up uh, hang out up there in Russia, and we'll see what happens to them. Now um, we start with a rather substantial army, but as you can see from our support our force limit, we can actually support quite a bit more, uh, and we'll probably end up building to that limit. Um, Change the name of the capital to Babylon based on a suggestion people made. Um, supply limit's pretty low. Just move our guys here. There we go. I think that'll be fine. And we'll build some more troops um, later. We could do it now. I don't remember if I have the Muslim thing where I can have more cavalry. Uh, I know I have I'm, I've kind of got a shortage of cavalry right now anyway, so I'll build, I'll build a few. Let's just uh, build some. Okay, and we can afford a couple more ships. Um, a lot of the people in the area are going to have a m lot more big ships, so I'm going to build a few of those. And maybe I shouldn't have built my troops in the provinces that uh, I could build ships in, so we'll, we'll go ahead and add a couple more ships there. And that gets rid of most of our money. We started with a lot, but the converter did that, so uh, I actually toned it down because we had several thousand gold in the conversion. So let's do our advisors, since that's what the game is telling us to deal with right now. Free advisor slots. Hmm. Stability cost is probably pretty good for us at the beginning, since we start with zero stability. Um, diplomatic relation. It's kind of nice. Um, what can I get with this, though? Land force limits? Ooh, we started with... Yeah, so we have to get this good. How much do we have left? Okay, so we can't, we can't get all, everything we want. But we start with a, a pretty good amount of money income, so... This just gets rid of our money early enough. Early on. We don't have an heir. That's not that big of a deal. D disputed succession, the Alp Urikids over there in Africa. Um, because of the decentralization thing, they they have these two vassals, but they'll usually just uh, reabsorb them pretty quickly. Not that those three provinces are that big of a deal for them anyway. <laughs> um, I don't think I'm going to do anything with these disputed successions right now. The only thing I could think I could take advantage of in any kind of significant way would be Anatolia, but we're not going to do that. Um, missions. So, we have cores and some stuff in Arabia, and it's probably, yeah, it's telling us to, to do that. It's alternatively telling us to ally with them. I think attacking Arabia's to get those cores back is probably not a bad idea. It'll give us some more coastal provinces so we can get some more ships and stuff. Um, and 
we'll leave it there for now. Um, I want to still go through with some stuff before I start doing that. Let's... Yeah, we got a free military leader. Let's go ahead and convert our king to one. Oh, wow, he's really good. Let's put him in charge here. Man. I doubt we're going to have a king this good for a while. He's really good. Uh, especially since I'm going to get a random heir. Now, because we have three vassals right now, and we can only have four diplomatic relations slots, we need to choose carefully what we want to do with our, our uh, diplomats right now. The logic, logical thing to do is to start integrating or annexing some of our vassals. Syria would be much more useful. For now, we're going to start working on getting Turkestan. And to do that, we need to have a, uh, a royal marriage and 190 relations. And you're going to lose some legitimately, legitimacy when we do this. Now, since I'm not going to ally with Arabia, probably, um, we'll leave that other one open for now. Um, I probably will never annex Ascalon because they're a merchant republic, and they'll probably use this land better than I will, because uh, I'll just get a load, load of money from them. Uh, Amalfi is also a merchant republic, so uh, we'll keep an eye on them. They're probably going to get killed because they're orthodox, or iconoclast. I don't know why it's showing Muslim here, but it doesn't really matter. Um, anything else I want to do? I don't think so. Okay, so let's determine what we what we actually want to do for our mission. I think reclaiming Al Hasa would is is not a bad idea. Uh, actually, let's leave that open for something else later and we'll do this spreading our culture up to here yeah because this is what Turkestani now it's not really a problem we don't get a penalty for this but as a matter of fact we we ba basically just lose points doing that um but I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway just because it's telling me to do it so we'll go ahead and do that. We'll do 36 months. That way I can save decisions like that for our, uh, people to, you know, give me suggestions about. Maybe people want me to keep Arabia around and be friendos with them. I don't know. Hmm. Is it worth it to boost our stability at this point? I think maybe it's not. Um, really, a lot of times you just want to leave your stability at at plus zero, and because you can get some random events that'll raise it. Um, and it's cheaper if you just raise it up from negative. If you really need it for something, yeah, you raise it with that. Or if you have an excess amount of uh, administrative power, because it does cap. Um, like if you don't want to spend it on on uh, texts or ideas or something. Or if you can't. Um, we don't have that problem, but other people do. I think we're okay on trade. Yeah, we control three of the trade nodes. Let's take a look at that. Trade screen. So we control this. And this all flows over there. Okay, but this is this is going to be our main trade node there, and then we own Basra here too, which is another one. Now, the trade is a bit circ is very circular. Um, basically, just has some trade zones that you will work through. We're probably not going to get too much into trading at this point, but uh, it's useful to know that that's there. We're going to be mostly focused on the ones that we control anyway. I'm going to hire some leaders, but we're not going to do that. Don't need to do anything with the economy right now. 
since we're still getting a bonus, a, a, uh, we're still getting money. And since I, I didn't do that mission, let's, let's get an alliance with someone. I think let's get an alliance with Armenia. Yeah, they're bordering us and I don't hate them too much. Might as well be friends with them. Now, I don't really hate Arabia anyway, but we do have cores that we need to reclaim from them, so we're going to do that. Um, I'll probably call it here as a shorter session, because I would, want, I, want, I would like to hear what you guys think I should be doing. I didn't come in this with a plan of what, I, what I'm going to be doing, how I'm going to be expanding, how I'm going to be playing the game. Um, I really just kind of wanted to get this out because, you know, I've been working on this for a while and I had some delays because of my uh, hard drive crash. I had to redo a little bit of it, not too much. I managed to recover a lot of it, but that combined with the holidays has kind of delayed things a little bit longer than I was hoping. So I'd like to have something out there and, you know, getting the game started and doing a few things right now certainly can help. So, um, let me know what you think, and I will see you next time on Let's Play Europa Universe 4.